Hi, this time I wanted to talk about two things. The first one, why are there game masters that do not promote roleplay? And why it's so important for game masters to participate as player characters every now and then. Let's talk about the first one. Why are there some game masters that run their sessions in a way that even though they do not prohibit roleplay, roleplay is, in a subtle way, discouraged. For example, maybe you are playing a sci-fi game, and in that sci-fi game, the player character is moving through this desert sort of area, perhaps a bit cliché. And the game master says something like, you are moving through the desert, and you encounter a Sinian landspeeder. And now the player goes, uh, uh, before that, the game master also says, what do you do? <laughs> Remember, that is unnecessary. Please check out the links in the description for more tips about that. And now the player goes, can my character pilot or drive that vehicle? And the game master, okay, make your tech roll or tech check or drive roll, depending on the system. And the player rolls and, I got a 15, and the Game Master, yes, you can pilot it. That is so dull, so lame, so... It's like a way of killing immersion altogether. It's so pointless, it's so boring. But now let's do it the right way. The Game Master describes, as you are dragging your feet through the hostile sands of this desert, you encounter a Sinian land speeder. You have never seen one in your life until now. Your only references have been pictures and some video footage. And then the player actually role plays. I approach the land speeder and I start to analyze the controls, the switches, anything that I can identify as a wheel or handlebars to pilot the vehicle or drive it. And then the game master, make your roll, make your tech roll or your drive roll. The player rolls, I obtain the 15. And the game master, these controls are quite similar to the Terranian land speeder back home. You can pilot it. So you see, you even toss a bit of world building there. Perhaps this alien species is using similar te technology to the one being employed in the Terranian... Uh, science. So, yes, it's all about that, but why does the Game Master, wh wh why are there Game Masters that promote this? Well, the blunt truth is that they don't know how to roleplay. So, they are obviously not going to encourage or foster that in their sessions, because they do not know how to roleplay. So, if their players start to actually roleplay, that Game Master is not going to be able to respond they haven't gotten into that creative roleplay mindset. I'm going to put a link in the description to an exercise that can help you with that. So yes, that's a very simple reason, but if you ever wonder why there are so many game masters that do everything in their power to stop roleplaying from happening and they actually play the RPG as a war game or as a board game or as some... They are not even playing a game, they are having a perhaps some mother may I converse, conversation, that's it. Okay, moving on to the next point. Even if you are a forever game master, it is crucial, it is vital for the immersion, I would say, and for the game challenges, for you to participate as a player character every opportunity that you have. Because when you step out of the role of a game master or dungeon master, you lose that control. Dungeon masters, game masters, referees, etc. They are significantly different from the other players at the table because they manage things. Everything related to the game world. Everything related to the rules. Rules and rulings. The players cannot oversee any of that. They do not know the secrets, the plotlines, the agendas. 
they don't know don't know many things about the setting they cannot overrule something apply a specific rule fix some problems discussions arguments when it comes to the application of a particular rule the use of certain powers all of that is overseen by the game master and the game master can carry out improvised solutions to many situations and by provide, providing adequate descriptions of the encounters of the places that you visit the non-player characters that you interact with the player characters cannot control or oversee that they are a separate category you, everyone has his or her sub role within the role playing uh, game environment and because of that some game masters because they forget to just to experience what they go through as a player character in any adventure in any scenario they get obsessed with control they want everything to be under their control the typical case of the frustrated writer that is not a game master you have a frustrated writer telling a story the story is created through the interactions of the player characters with the environment it happens organically and so you don't have players anymore in that erroneous method you have people that have gotten into a theme ride and they are just there to make rolls when the game master indicates them to do so the game master uses the adventure module either a purchase module or one that you wrote yourself or even an improvised adventure as a strict set of rules rather than guidelines and ideas to create an adventure rather to create a story through uh, to create a story <laughs> through the adventure even for example in the case of dungeons and dragons if you forget what it feels like to enter those hostile adventure sites experience the dangers the enemies it's quite terrifying if you are playing a serious dungeons and dragons adventure and you are entering this temple crypt tower mansion castle you have this sense that you don't know where things are located you don't know how to proceed you enter that first room and it feels so exciting so exciting you don't even know the actual size of the complex in many situations there are hidden passageways trapdoors perhaps what you thought was a simple fort is actually a huge complex an underground lair that expands or, or goes on for who knows how many kilometers and that sense of adventure actually allows you as a game master to create better adventures and to apply the different rules uh, different objects anything re related to the adventure the positioning of enemies because you, now you are thinking as a player you know what gets players scared what restores their hope especially if you are playing like a dark souls or demon souls type of adventure and you want to really push the players to their limits you know the right spot in the adventure where you can give them some sort of magical item or some restorative or regen regenerative item to help them when they are almost at the brink of death when they are about to die and so there are many benefits when it comes to participate as a player character even if you are a forever game master a couple of tips i am a forever game master so the things that i do to keep in contact with that i always try to introduce my my groups to role-playing games like the twas role-playing game before christmas so because in those games there's actually this well you could say it's part of the game sometimes you play as the game master and other times you participate as a player character and another player character another player is going to participate as the game master so you're kind of like forcing the players to be the game masters and now you get to play as the player character another tip but this is a bit less useful is solo role playing i have already mentioned in other videos that solo role playing games they should be considered a different experience when it comes to training you as a player character that is improving your game master capabilities 
by reminding you of what it is to be a player character there are some benefits but because you are still playing with yourself and in some cases about yourself well that sounds a bit weird but because you are still playing with a, a game master that to a certain extent is another version of you you won't feel the same pressure or surprises when it comes to another game master another referee etc that is presenting his or her ideas to match against your wits and your capacity to fuse that real world persona what you are with the fictional persona so if we were to take a look at martial arts it is a bit similar in martial arts you obtain the greater improvements when you are actually sparring having let's call it a friendly bout against another person because you need to adapt to the pressure that that person is playing upon you by attacking you that person is attacking you from all angles using all sorts of techniques and you don't know you cannot predict that so you grow as a person by adapting to the surprises and it's the same way when it comes to uh, role-playing games when you play with others you adapt to their uh, playing methods and in the case of martial arts you can also shadow box but because you are shadow boxing you're practicing against your shadow it's not the same pressure when compared to a living person in the case of role-playing games the same thing you play solo role-playing games but it's not the same it's like uh, shadow boxing there is no pressure when you are playing with others, you feel that that pressure that, oh, I need to pay attention to what the game master is communicating because there could be some keys, uh, some elements within the scene that perhaps could play a part or par sorry, could play a, uh, an important or even a partial role in uh, the adventure, in how things proceed. You feel that pressure and that's really exciting when you relax or become tranquil or, or comfortable within that pressure you obtain excitement and fun and of course this is all related uh, to immersion as well you want to role play you don't want to show your ignorance about actually role playing you also do not want to show your ignorance about playing a game applying the powers skills and abilities and tools in the best way possible sometimes that pressure is actually a positive thing but that doesn't happen in, in solo role playing games and sometimes I also wonder if there are people that have been playing solo for so long that they forget how to play role-playing games in the traditional way. Because I have been reviewing the Game Master, the Mythic Game Master Emulator 2nd Edition, a great product, amazing. But uh, throughout the document, there are several instances where it says something like, Unlike a traditional role-playing game where you ask the Game Master questions. Now that's terrible. Oh, no. So it, it makes me think that there are many solo role-players that perhaps they never learned how to play a proper role-playing game. Or perhaps they forgot about it altogether. So yes, uh, those are my thoughts in this video. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your likes and your comments. And if you, have, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you. Please check out the description for different uh, tips and advice videos covering those subjects about roleplay and such. See you later.